All right, Grace, let's get things going here. All right, so firstly, I want to welcome everybody. My name is John Gleason, and on behalf of Janan, Grace, and myself, I'd like to welcome you to the Customer Success Meetup for San Francisco. In a post-COVID world, we are going live to the world, so thank you very, very much um, to all of the people who are joining uh, from somewhere other than the from somewhere other than the Bay Area. Um, tonight, we have a really, really special panel. Um, but before we get down to business, if you're brand new, um, thank you for joining our community. We're always looking to grow it. Um, we hope that this um, becomes part of your, your regular monthly activity um, that you're signed up to do and invest in, in your education and customer success. Um, tonight, we're going to be focusing on um, kind of getting back to the nuts and bolts of things and really focusing on uh, skills that are particularly applicable to customer success managers. We've gotten some feedback um, that people really want to dive deep, um, especially in this, in this COVID world where people are looking to get into customer success. Companies are investing in their customers and as a result, customer success. Uh, and some people are looking for work as well. Um, so we're going to be doing that tonight. We're going to be covering a topic here that I think is very, very relevant, which is engaging executive sponsors. Um, but before we get down to that and hand it over to our great panel, I would like to introduce you to our sponsor. None of this is possible without our sponsors. Uh, so I'm going to hand it over to Mark Goldberg, a good friend over at Index Ventures, to share a little bit about why customer success is so important to Index. Hey, thank you, John. And uh, thanks to everyone in this community for, for having me and for having the Index team. Um, I was joking with the panelists before this. This is the easiest sponsorship we've ever done. Uh, it's also our first digital event like this. Uh, usually we'd have some food and some, some drinks for everyone, but we're going to make do here. And um, a little bit about Index Ventures. We're a multi-stage fund. We do everything from seed investing all the way through pre-IPO. Uh, the way that I've gotten to know John is uh, I'm an investor in Keep Trucking. And, uh, and I think, uh, you know, the way that this came together is over the last kind of 12 to 18 months, there's been so much demand in our portfolio to meet great customer success leaders. And I think John is just sick of me connecting him to all these companies that now want to meet great people in the ecosystem. And this recognition that there's just this amazing talent in this function. Um, so one of the things we wanted to do was just to get to know some of the leaders in this space. Um, so we're thrilled to be here. Uh, I'm looking at the, the slide we have and you'll notice um, a handful of my other colleagues are gonna be joining as well. And we all look forward to meeting you in the breakout sessions. Um, I'm gonna pause there because I think we have a really interesting panel and we just thank you again for allowing us to host here. And uh, with that, I'm gonna hand it over to Grace. Thank you, Mark. Just a little bit of housekeeping from me. Remember that um, this is the Zoom menu bar. Um, for any questions that you have during the panel, definitely add them to the Q&A. There's going to be a portion for Q&A at the end. For any discussion, use the chat. That's where you chatted in your name and role and company. And um, just make sure uh, all of your microphones will automatically be muted here, but Note that we are actually going to be having a breakout networking session after this panel. So stay tuned for that. There's going to be a new meeting link so that we can have a breakout room um, networking session after this. And I'll pass it back to Junan. All right, uh, so I'm very, very excited for tonight's panel. We've assembled a group of rock star CSMs who are willing to share their secrets in terms of how they engage executive sponsors. So uh, I'm really excited to uh, introduce Tanya Simpson, who's a senior enterprise customer success manager at Keep Trucking, Aaron Durfee, who's a director of customer success at Salesforce, and Vanessa Gatihi, who is a high touch customer success manager at Slack. Um, so why don't we get started and let's start with introductions. Uh, I gave your titles, but there's so much more to you. Uh, in terms of your experience and maybe some background around uh, the companies that you work at, uh, as well as your com your customer portfolio. So, uh, Tanya, I'll start with you. If you could share a little bit about uh, you know yourself and your experience and your company. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. Um, so. 
we keep saying this company name, keep trucking. So um, uh, we are a company that is based in the Bay Area. We do have locations um, around the country um, and also some global offices. Um, but we work in logistics and we also work in, I mean, essentially trucking. So we make electronic log devices as well as other uh, consumables and items to help companies predict risk, um, as well as, you know, monitor hours of service. So that's kind of our, our basic things that we do in a nutshell. Um, my background, I, I have a bit of a probably diverse background. So I'm one of those people who made the leap from sales and account management over to customer success. So um, I spent some time in sales and sales operations for uh, Dell for a little bit. I also worked for uh, Forrester Research. Um, had customer success experience at Red Hat before landing at Keep Trucking where I work um, in our enterprise space with companies that have 500 vehicles or more. So um, a lot of what we do in the enterprise space because of how we acquire our customers um, definitely requires a lot more interaction and account management along with um, success metrics, but it's definitely rewarding and definitely something that um, is continually evolving at KT. Awesome. Thanks for joining us. Aaron, I'll have you go next. Aaron, I think you're on mute. Yeah, I'll unmute myself, sorry. <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm Aaron. I'm a success director at Salesforce. Uh, prior to joining Salesforce, I guess I'll start with the early part of my career. Um, I started Accenture, so I did SQL implementations um, for about eight years. And then I worked at two startups. So the first was a predictive analytics for sales and marketing company. And there I led customer success um, with our top strategic customers. And I also worked in partnerships. So with data providers, as well as Dun & Bradstreet as a strategic partner. After Lattice, I moved into digital health and I was at a super early stage company. So I actually leveraged a lot of my background um, doing Siebel implementations uh, to actually do the operations. So I set up all of our business ops. We use Salesforce. Um, so really got that going. I also led customer uh, success there and support and then moved to Salesforce about three and a half years ago where I am today and I'm uh, leading a team of about six people within our mid commercial segment, which are companies that are between about 200 to 2500 employees and um, Yeah, I'm excited to be here and share how we, you know, how we think about interacting with exact sponsors. Awesome. Thanks for joining us. And last but not least, uh, Vanessa, I'll have you introduce yourself. Yeah. Hi, everyone. And yeah, thanks for having me here. Um, so I'm Vanessa Gatihi. I work at Slack. Um, hopefully many of you on the line use Slack in your day to day. But if you do not, it is a channel based messaging platform where work gets done and teams stay engaged and aligned. So very uh, relevant in this remote work time. And so Super fortunate and lucky that I get to work with my customers very deeply and help them transform their workforce to remote. Uh, my background is I actually got started in kind of professional services and consulting. So back in the day when we still had to physically travel and deploy software um, on site. Um, so I did that for a couple of years, really liked working with customers and didn't like that, you know, I'd get them to a point and then had to give them up and move to the next customer. So I thought I wanted to transition more in the account management space, which I did. And that kind of quickly transformed into customer success where I've been for the last couple of years. Um, again, got my start in more financial services. So doing software um, for banks, investment firms, things like that. Moved to e-commerce, which was a really big switch for me. And it was great to work with people like Nike and Lululemon, really fun, cool brands. And now I'm at Slack. Awesome, thank you. Um, so today we're talking about engaging executive sponsors and uh, before we get into the tactics and the strategies of how we do this, let's start with why. Let's start with why is this important and I think it's universally understood that, you know, doing this activity and building that type of relationship is important, but we'd love to hear from your personal perspective, each of the panelists, why do you feel like it's important and critical to nail kind of this piece of the puzzle when um, building out the relationship with your customers? Erin, I'll start with you since you're, uh, since you're not on mute. <laughs> sure. So I think, you know, the exec sponsors are really the ones that, you know, are the key decision makers and influencers. They're the ones that, you know, are going to be deciding if you continue to be a partner. Um, they also open doors, you know, to other opportunities to expand relationships. 
And it's really important to get, you know, an understanding and alignment at the very top to make sure that all the great work that you're doing is one, recognized, and two, is really on target with what the business actually needs, especially now changing, you know, dynamics mean that priorities shift a lot. And so executive sponsorship is really important and critical to make sure that you're really laser focused on what matters most to the business leaders. So that was fantastically said. <laughs> um, sorry, there's a little background noise. Uh, I guess the only thing I would add on top of that is, you know, because Slack is a tool that is going to be adopted across an organization, there's going to be many end users of this. Um, you know, we need to change people's behavior. People maybe are familiar with working in email or, you know, Gchat. And so we need executive sponsors to really help drive change. You know, what is the inspiring messaging of why people are going to change the way, the way they're working and move into Slack? Um, you know, again, we need them for this comms. We need them for the vision and influencing, you know, other leaders to get their teams to move on. So, you know, executive sponsorship is really helpful for that. I think the only thing I would maybe even try to add, because both of you did state that so perfectly, would just be collaboration, right? And so what I mean by that is, um, just as Vanessa described internally with you and getting adoption, you know, within the companies, also for us, we're still small enough where we have executive sponsors who can provide feedback um, that helps us kind of drive innovation um, when it comes to our product team and, and development team and when we're testing roadmaps, things of that nature. So it helps to truly prove the value across the board and not just, you know, what they're paying for the product itself, but how they feel that their voice is um, affecting the outcomes of the products for the future. So I find that when I have executive sponsors engaged at that level, it is much easier downstream to be able to um, pivot, move and show value. Awesome. Well, um, I think it's we're, we're pretty well aligned. Getting executive sponsorship is is very important. Um, so now that we've kind of defined the why, let's let's move on to the who. So how do you define who is an exec sponsor? Is that by title or responsibility or how do you think of exec sponsor and identifying the right exec sponsor? I think for me, I I use Aaron's definition, which is truly whose budget is it? <laughs> um, you know, like who is the person who actually is going to ensure that this contract is is being signed. So for me, I, there are tiers for me within executive sponsorship. Um, I also have coaches um, within the business and things of that nature. But the ultimate executive sponsor for me is who holds the budget and who is the ultimate person who decides um, if my product is renewed and who, you know, makes the purchase. So that is my definition of the executive sponsor. There are also high influencers, but when I define executive sponsor, it solely comes down to who holds the budget and who controls whether or not the renewal happens. I would add to that. So from, from my perspective with the work that I do at Salesforce, because the technology is implemented often by IT, but then business leaders are the ones who actually, you know, their teams are the ones that really generate the value of the platform. It's actually really important to have multiple exec sponsors and not to be single threaded. And so going back to, you know, uh, what Vanessa was saying earlier about the importance of collaboration, it's really important to actually help to facilitate collaboration amongst multiple executive sponsors. And I find that that's a critical part of a role that we can play in customer success is actually listening to understanding and building multiple executive sponsor relationships at one organization and then helping them to actually be more collaborative together. Yeah, I think the only, I mean, I think you guys both did a really great job. The only thing I would add, and I think it's kind of in line with what you're saying is for me, it's someone who can really heavily influence, are they staying with X, which is my company, or are they moving in another direction? And agree with Aaron that we want to try to cultivate as many of those as possible. You know, I think some of the wins that you have is when you go get this you know, for Slack, it's like, let's get this sales leader and let's actually make them an executive sponsor. You know, maybe if I hadn't cultivated that relationship, they wouldn't have had any say in whether they want to keep Slack or not. But we get them to champion and kind of buy into the cause that now they'll maybe actually have an influential say and in, are they going to double down on us? So kind of cultivating those relationships and making more people uh, make decisions in, uh, in your direction. Love that. So hold the budget. Do they hold the budget? Do they have the influence? 
And can you get multiple exec sponsors to work together to strengthen the relationship? I actually really like that point around, um, they may not think of themselves as an exec sponsor, but can you get them to become that exec sponsor, which is pretty cool. All right, so we've defined the who, let's move into how. So can you share some of the strategies that you've used to engage some of your customer execs? And maybe once you've gotten them engaged, what do you, what do you do? How do you maintain that engagement beyond just getting them to join one EBR or one EBC? Vanessa, I'll start with you. Darn. Um, <laughs> I mean, it's interesting because it's like, for me, I was like thinking back, it's almost different in every account. Like I don't have like, this is my tried and true way of how I get this executive sponsor. Um, one of the examples though that, that did come to mind is, um, you know, luckily we're at Slack and we're in the Bay Area and one of my main customers in the Bay Area. And so, you know, we were trying to really build this relationship, get executive buy-in and they kept on like brushing us off. Like, hey, we finished implementation. We don't really want to talk to you guys. We finished the tactical stuff. We don't want to engage. Um, and, you know, it really was inviting them to a, an outing. Like, we really want to invite you to this. It was, a, it was a game. We want to invite you to this game. Oh, and also we want to um, give certifications to your team. And I think that really pricked them up. You know, some IT leaders really are bought into certifications like, oh, tell us more about these certifications. Oh, and, and, and yes, and then we'll go to this event with you. And so it really was kind of that the, the outing and the certifications for uh, her team were really the catalyst to build that relationship. And that led to a lot of more um, executive relationships being built through that kind of one meeting. And actually, Janine, you were, you were there and part of that. I would say for me, while, while each engagement is slightly different, the the equation is the same, right? So if it's an executive sponsor that I don't have a relationship, what I always do is whoever I have the relationship, if there's a way I can champion them and show off while showing off the product, also show the work that has been done by the person that I work with. So if it is, you know, if I'm working with Barbara, and Barbara is the person who's in charge of our com of compliance and safety for them. It's like, you know, hey, Bob, I know you weren't able to make this EBR with Barbara. I want to highlight the great work that she's doing and also spend some time talking to you about, you know, ways we can continue to partner. Um, that's a real generic way of kind of how it works. But essentially what I've always found, especially if there's a cold or an, an empty executive sponsor, is working, it kind of plays on what Vanessa said about making people, you know, that executive sponsor that they didn't know, essentially elevating the work that my personal contact is doing in order to get the attention of the executive sponsor is something that definitely works for me when we don't have that relationship. Um, the second part of your question is how do you keep them engaged is just to always be able to speak to their level about what's important to them. So determining after that first meeting, like, okay, how are you using our data? What reporting is important to you? are you using this for forecasting, right? Just understanding like, you know, what keeps you up at night, what ties, what in my product ties back to, you know, your ultimate goals um, and always speaking to that level and proving that value while never negating the relationship with the other contacts that we have within the business. Those were, those were really great. The only sort of thing that I would add to that, I think it's really important to recognize that, you know, I think especially in today's climate, people, People have so many challenges and that's personal, that's professional. So I think being, you know, first and foremost, empathetic, understanding is this a climate which is causing the customer to have challenges or successes? Because both of those require some additional support. And it's really important to actually understand and sort of put yourself in your exec sponsor's shoes. And I think coming to them with a perspective where you're really listening and actively doing so and being curious about you know, what's going on with them and then offering resources. Um, I know what's been really nice that Salesforce has done, which has made my job easier and success is actually curating a lot of really great resources that will help executives navigate through this time of change and being a vehicle to actually help to share that and even curate some things and say, look, here are some resources that I think might be really helpful, whether it's that you're trying to, you know, move more stuff into, you know, doing it digitally or, or you're struggling, you're trying to figure out how to navigate everybody working from home. So I think being really empathetic, having some great, um, you know, resources to share. And then I think, you know, understanding that you're the expert in, in the technology that you're coming from and being confident in that, being authentic, being confident, 
um, making personal connections where you can. I thought, you know, taking people to events was a great, great idea. Um, I'll share a personal story, which is um, I lead a type one diabetes walk for Salesforce within um, San Francisco, which um, has been a really great way to, to network and meet people. And one of my customers, we had the CEO as the corporate chair for the walk last year. And so that was a really great way that I could actually then engage with the CEO of one of my customers because we had this experience in common. I actually came and spoke to his, you know, one of his all hands about, you know, my, uh, my experience with type and diabetes and so on. So, you know, I think looking for any opportunity to make a personal connection is really valuable and you just kind of build from there. Uh, that's perfect. I I respect everything that you do. Um, with the diabetes walk, I am a lot more simple um, in that I am a ridiculous uh, smack talker when it comes to college football. So one of the things that I typically make a common um, connection with a lot of clients, especially within our industry, is about, you know, who are your teams? Um, and even if it is just like, hey, the Crimson Tide's going to beat you this week, or even if it is like, looks like the Chiefs are going to win the championship. Um, it's just a quick way to connect where they realize, to your point, Aaron, that there are people on the other end. Um, and just a way for you to stay top of their inbox without selling something, even without bringing value, just so you can be familiar. <laughs> Roll Tide, Aaron. That's great. Um, I mean, I think the theme there is exec sponsors are people too. They have priorities, they have work that they need to get done, but they also have personal lives that you can relate to. So maybe they like to go to games or um, maybe they think the, you know, the Buckeyes are significantly better than any team in the SEC. I don't know. So, um, all right, let's move on to the flip side of this. Um, can you share an example of engaging an exec sponsor um, that didn't go well? Um, you weren't able to reach them or you didn't quite get that relationship that you really wanted to. Um, would love to hear some examples of, uh, of some learnings as well. Oh, I'll start. Um, I can think back to um, when, I, when I first started my introduction to social selling. And so I was trying to get this executive sponsor and trying to figure out like, you know, the emails weren't going anywhere. Um, the internal contacts weren't able to get me to kind of where I needed to go. And I shot a, shot a LinkedIn um, <laughs> message to this executive sponsor. It was kind of like a Hail Mary, like maybe I'll get some response. And I got a response, but it wasn't the response that I needed, which was um, they were not into social selling and they would have preferred that I reached out to an executive admin to schedule time to speak with them. Um, and so I had to recognize that, you know, while it was a Hail Mary and me trying to get some level of contact, all level of contact isn't necessarily good contact um, when it comes to building relationships. So I was pushed down about four levels before we made it back up to that executive sponsor. Um, it worked out, but not the way that I needed it to. We missed deadlines, we missed timelines. And I do think the relationship was never really set up correctly because um, he found that approach to be a little too eager. Yeah, the, the example that came to my mind um, is one, I think this was maybe last year, a year and a half ago, where, you know, we, we had been doing a lot of great work with the people on the team. And I think to what we said earlier of how do we get them, I think one formula is also just earning the right to get your day-to-day -day context to make that intro, right? If you put in the work, you build that credibility, over time, they're going to make that intro for you if you don't have it um, organically when you get the account. So we, we did all that work and they're like, oh, it's, it's these two people. And like one was like, CIO North America, the other one was like global technology lead or architect. Like it's these two guys. So we get the meeting, these two people. And, you know, from then it was always just very unclear. Well, like who's the actual true decision maker of this? Who actually owns the budget? And I think looking back, you know, maybe I personally and, you know, along with the account team, we didn't do a great enough job of really getting that clarity. And I think that just to Tanya's point, it just wasted a lot of time because it was like, okay, so does the next meeting need to be with both of you? They're both very busy. They both have separate EAs. It took, you know, two months to get the next meeting on their calendars. And so I think looking back, you know, to Aaron and Mike's point earlier, it is great to have multiple executive sponsors, but at the end of the day, you do need to like know which one has priority, which one do I need to actually get time on and buy in on to move the ball forward. And I think that one, we wasted time just trying to take these two guys equally, um, when in reality, it actually was one of them. 
I'll, I'll share a story. Um, there is a, an exec sponsor that um, I was actually told by, so this was a senior leader that had come from Salesforce. That was a senior leader at my customer. And he, you know, was really close to some very senior leader still who pulled me aside and said, hey, this guy really wants this meeting with you. Here's what needs to be in the meeting. We're going to give you all these resources so you can do all of this analysis. Um, I skipped a really important vital step, which was checking with the exec sponsor directly on what he wanted in the meeting. So I come prepared with all this material. Um, it's all been blessed by all these senior people. Uh, <laughs> sit down for this meeting, start going through the slides. I've got execs from Salesforce there with me as well. And about five minutes in, he says, this is not at all what I wanted and just completely shifted the conversation. Um, it still ended up being a great meeting, but you know, we as a company actually kind of had egg on our face, right? In terms of preparing for this properly. So I think, you know, the real call out there is know directly from the exec sponsor what they want and what they expect and you know make sure you know you can work with their ea uh, make sure you have the agenda crisp so that that time that you're spending is of the utmost value to that person um because when you miss the mark it can really you know like like the others were saying it can really affect the long-term ability to build a relationship you kind of get one you know first shot to make that impression and and you want to do it right awesome well, uh, each of you talked about other people outside of uh, customer success that have worked, that have partnered with you to engage your customers. And Vanessa, you talked about the broader account team. Aaron, you talked about senior executives. Tanya, you talked about product. Customer success is a team sport. So like, what other groups within your company do you engage to help build a relationship with exec sponsors? And you know, if one of you could maybe touch on the, the sales aspect, because I know we, we partner really, really closely with AEs, we'd love to hear about that specifically as well. I'll take it. That's one of my favorite topics. Our team, um, especially working with AEs, our team, I like to joke that uh, our sales and CS team, we're like a big family, but we're more like first cousins. And what I mean by that is, you know, we will fight amongst ourselves, but don't come and mess with the family. Right. And so that's just kind of like how our division is. And so uh, the way we do that is we make sure that we have very clear swim lanes um, and how we engage with the customer. So essentially, you know, the pitch is, you know, my name is Tanya. I am going to be your customer success manager. Think of me as your concierge to help you navigate um, any challenges you may have or any additional um, items that you need within Keep Truck and I will also be here to prove your val to prove the value to you and also see how we can continue like to move things down the line. However, um, our AE team sells the account, but then they're also brought back in for upsells. So to that end, I refer to my sales counterpart as my growth and development specialist. We'll look at things together, but they're going to walk alongside you to look at forecasts and numbers for more of a um, specific product or a specific time period, but we all collectively work together. So that internally looks like um, meetings that we have to align on account strategies for the quarter. That internally looks like, you know, who's going to take which role in this particular call based on who owns the relationship with the executive sponsors on the phone. But it definitely requires a lot of collaboration and, you know, making sure we move through our internal awkwardness so it's never presented as dissension to the client. I really like the, uh, the growth and development specialist. I like jotted that down. I'm like, oh, that's good. Um, so not talk about AEs, but talk uh, EAs. Yes, AEs, but uh, a different kind of group and stakeholders. Um, so one of the things that we do at Slack, and I think we do this really well, and you know, I hope I do this at all the companies I work at is, you know, for key accounts, you can't do this for every account, but you know, those, you know, enterprise level accounts that are bringing in uh, a lot of revenue. Uh, if we really want to get a meeting with someone very senior, let's see a CHRO, a head of sales, you know, we do make asks internally um, to our leadership. So we ghostwrite messages for them. You know, hey, I, you're probably struggling through this remote work time period, time period right now. You know, I'd love to get on an EBC and EBR with you and walk you through, you know, how Slack is managing this. So really leveraging our executives to reach out to very senior level executives at our customers. Um, and that works really well for kind of like more big formal than executive meetings that we'll have and we'll host. Um, and I think to Aaron's point earlier, really making sure the executive on our end is like talking about the pain or something that they know is going to be really important to that executive because that's just going to really bring them to the table, not just, hey, this is a big shiny logo at Slack. It's, it's a big shiny logo at Slack that can talk about and is probably dealing with an issue that I'm dealing with at, at their company. 
Um, and also, I think one thing we do really well at Slack as well is just, you know, if I see on LinkedIn that so and so at the company has worked with someone else, even if they're not a very big senior executive uh, at the company, it's like, oh, hey, I seen you worked with this person when you guys were both at LinkedIn. You know, we'd really love to get a meeting on the calendar. You know, do you think you feel comfortable making an intro or giving us intel on this person? So kind of that, I think Tanya said social selling, but like social customer relationship management, uh, really leveraging people that have those relationships. Yeah, you guys totally nailed it. Um, I would add, I think, at least for me, I, I find, I like to say that customer success is sort of the glue between all the different functions that are internal to the, to the organization and how we best sort of approach customers as a unified front. So, you know, all man at manage bringing in product, I'll help escalate with support if needed. Uh, I partner really closely with the account team and then also work on, we call them Salesforce on Salesforce sessions, which basically is, you know, sort of telling customers how Salesforce does whatever the topic might be. So, you know, if an exec sponsor is trying to figure out, you know, how to onboard a bunch of people during a pandemic, you know, we could set up a session where we share how Salesforce tackles a challenge like that. So um, I think there's a lot of creative ways and being in success, you, I think, are um, in, a, in a really unique position to be that glue and actually help your customers really navigate your own organization and get the most value out of everything that the whole company has to offer. Awesome. All right, so we're gonna uh, transition over to actually the toughest part of the panel, which is the questions from the audience. Um, so we've got a few minutes here before we need to jump over to the breakouts. Um, so let me, let me look through these questions. We've got a good one here. Um, when should we start engaging the executive sponsor during onboarding immediately after onboarding or a quarter after onboarding during your first EBR or all or none of the above? It's always like yesterday. It should have been yesterday as, as at least from my perspective, it's as early as possible. You know, if you can get them even before, or you should be getting them before you do the implementation, right? Because you really want to make sure that you're configuring the software that the technology, um, is really meeting the demands of the business. So we love to engage with executive sponsors before we even, you know, build a project plan. We really want to make sure that, you know, any communication going out to the company is coming from an executive sponsor. You know, why are we adopting Slack? You know, what does this mean for my day to day um, working at that company? So for us, it's as soon as possible. Yeah, I totally echo that. Um, I think, you know, it's really vital to have there be a warm handoff as well. You know, the, the sales motion is selling a vision and the success motion is helping to realize the value from the vision that was sold. And so it's critical as a handoff between pre and post sales for that salesperson to help facilitate that conversation. Um, it's a really important part of, I think, making sure the customer feels valued and actually that they, you know, feel like there's a unified team that's supporting them as well. I would definitely echo you, Erin, in that I think it, as customer success professionals, it's important for us to understand, how do I wanna word this? It's important for us to understand how, um, how the customer was won. So like, did the sales team just take a budget and close it and get a commission? Or was there a true sales cycle? Um, and so sometimes to your point about the warm handoff, right, it is making sure that you write the wrongs of the sales process as early as you can um, in order to get that alignment internally with your customers. And so I think for me, um, if it's something that's coming in, it's not like a relationship that we're taking over because they're moving the division, that sales handoff, um, to your point, Munan, if it's coming back at that EBR, making sure that every person's at the table for that particular meeting to make sure that we're kicking off things correctly for the kickoff for an onboarding project manager, keep checking, or if it's the EBR that's done shortly after that, just making sure that we write the cycle, making sure that all the people who should have been in the room are now in the room with the relationship. All right, looks like we've got time for one last question. Um, so let's say we've got an executive sponsor who is very difficult to get a hold of, uh, to schedule time with, and you're going to do a cold outreach. What kind of messaging would you leverage to drive value to that introduction to that meeting to get a response? Uh, 
I, I mean, I think it's going to depend on what role that leader is in, right? Cause you you want to do the outreach kind of addressing some pain you think that person has or, you know, addressing um, something that's going to be relevant to them that your solution can really solve. So I think it would really just depend. Is it a sales leader? You know, Aaron, you probably write to those a lot. Is it a HR leader? Is it a technology leader? Um, I think, I you know, again, acknowledging what do you think they're dealing with or struggling with and how you'd be able to help. So I think it's kind of really depends on who that persona is. I think that's key, Vanessa, right? It depends on, you know, the point. Like we're not adding names in, in the CRM just to add the names and check that they're an executive sponsor. It is understanding kind of what their need is. And then just kind of, for me, it's like, I always ask for a meeting that's like a random amount of time that seems non-threatening. So I ask for like a 15 to 20 minute catch up. Um, and then I do put the bullet points of kind of what I want to discuss. Um, but I don't put too much because I don't want to get pushed down a level. I don't want you to push me down. Oh, well, you need to talk to this person. I don't want to get pushed down a level, but I do try to be concise in my messaging, but it definitely, the messaging is definitely catered to who we're trying to reach in, you know, honestly, what I need from them and what I hope that they can gain from me. I think the other strategy, there's two other strategies, I would say. One is, I think, Tanya, you were mentioning earlier the concept of a coach who is an employee of the customer who can maybe help guide you, maybe help even set up the meeting, and you can help that person look good. So I think that's an awesome strategy. Um, the second is, you know, if you're trying to contact someone and you're not getting through, the other idea, you know, would be to, to get a leader at your own company to actually write a communication for you. So, you know, I've ghostwritten a bunch of emails so that someone more senior can actually send that communication and, and hopefully get a better response. So, you know, I think either of those would also be helpful. And I would say, you know, if it was one thing, you know, we're all really in the people business, we're in the relationship business, right? And so, you know, if you do the hard work to get that first meeting, one little trick uh, I like to use is just be really polite and nice to the EA. You know, even after the meeting, like if you go back and forth with him or her, be like, thank you so much. I know you're so busy doing all these other things for your executive, um, you know, really appreciate your help. I just think like that nice little touch of really even just like thanking the EA separately for that work. I mean, I maybe it's just not correlation or causation, but I feel like that helps me then get those next meetings a little bit easier. Just, you know, the EAs are really important, influential people. So really making sure you treat them with, um, you know, politeness and respect. Awesome. I'll remember that. That one's, that one's very important. Um, so thank you so much, Tanya, Vanessa, and Aaron for sharing your experiences, uh, your tips and your tricks, as well as uh, the learnings um, from some mistakes that you've made in the past. So um, hope everybody got a lot of value out of this discussion. Um, we're going to move into the networking portion of the meetup. Um, and I'll pass it back over to Grace. Thank you so much again. Um, and just before we get into the meetup, we have a NPS survey that I'll chat in the link now. Please take some time to share your feedback with us. And then if you go to the next link or the next slide, um, we are going to share the networking launch now. So I'll send in the link on Zoom chat. We're going to hold here for a little bit, but I'll see the rest of you there. We'll be doing breakouts. So see you in just a bit.